Hey, can you ask Cassie to check with her mother? I left a message with her. Throughout our investigation. Okay. Well, I had no other way to find her. Okay. Thank you. We made several attempts to interview Cassandra Escobar to give her the chance to tell her story. Escobar never took that opportunity, but her mother told me in a text, every story has two sides. The side you're being told is incorrect, saying the family's attorney, State Senator Gerald Malloy, told them not to respond to our requests. On February 17th, as the sun rose over Darlington County, Cassie Escobar got out of bed and drove to work. What she didn't know, she wasn't driving home that night. 20 miles away inside the county courthouse, the solicitor's office was working to convince the grand jury to indict Escobar on one count of murder. And just after lunch, a pair of Darlington County deputies walked into Miriam's kitchen to find Escobar. They slipped her out of a back door and into a patrol truck. Despite the murder indictment, deputies did not handcuff her, not until they got her into the secured jail sally port and walked her into the booking door. The handcuffs weren't the only unusual part of this case. We pulled lead investigator Heather Mays' criminal justice training roster. We found no training in evidence collection, gunshot investigations, nor homicide training something the PVs think the sheriff needs to address immediately. They need better training for their officers. You don't send an officer to a homicide with no training. We also wanted to question Mays about those voluntary witness statements, but investigator Mays did not respond. We asked Darlington County Sheriff James Hudson for a sit down on camera interview to discuss his office's handling of this case. When he backed out, we tracked him down. You all sent a deputy out on this scene who did not have Sir, training for the crime scene? She didn't have to There's no requirement she had to have that. You think she was qualified to do what she did? I think she's qualified to be an employee of the sheriff's office. Do you think she was did the right thing I think by she's in qualified to be employed at the Dolphin County Sheriff's Office. That's all I can tell you. And you stay behind what she did? I'm going over here to meet this guy. He's waiting on me now. Thank you, sir. We also wanted the sheriff to explain why his office never called SLED in to collect evidence and to help determine whether this was a homicide or an accident. A couple weeks before this encounter, the sheriff agreed to meet with us at his office off camera. We spent two hours laying out what we'd uncovered. The sheriff initially agreed to an interview, then backed out, and he sent us this letter arguing if he commented on the case, he could compromise it. Even though Sheriff Hudson and two of his top deputies spent hours talking about the case with us just two days before this letter. Sheriff, you got a second? So the sheriff left us no choice but to track him down at his office. I want to talk to you about this case, Cassandra Escobar. I understand that. You and I had a two-hour conversation. Why, why would you not? I can't do it anymore. Why won't you explain what your office did and did not do? That would be handled in court, sir. You're not going to explain to the public what steps you guys took that, and the that, missteps? That, that, that court is for the public. It would be handled in court. Well, your constituents are going to see this report. It would be handled in court, sir. Something I can tell you. Do you admit that your office made some mistakes in this case? It would be handled in court. Would you do anything differently now? It would be handled in court, Mr. Ball. That's all I can tell you. All right. Reverend, you're right now. Thank you, Adam. May it please the court. Before you at this time with her counsel uh, is C Cassandra Jacqueline Escobar. Uh, I contacted Senator Malloy, and the wheels were set in motion for us to go ahead and have this hearing today. Senator Malloy, you're right now. I am glad that we are able to accommodate Senator Malloy's schedule. Uh, and I think the court sent Senator Malloy know that's how I operate. I did talk with them. In this Escobar's attorney was addressed as senator more than a half dozen times in a courtroom where both sides are presumed to be equal, something that generated whispers in the courtroom. Initially, um, as Escobar indicated that you know, Caleb took his own life by his own hand. Fast forward to June 2nd and that story began to unravel. 
Fourth Circuit Deputy Solicitor Kennard Redmond got involved in the Escobar prosecution last June, immediately following her confession and arrest on involuntary manslaughter. Coroner Todd Hardy says he helped convince Redmond to take over the prosecution and to follow the leads with the gunshot residue evidence. Prior to that date, the GSR test did find that there was GSR residue on the hands of Ms. Escobar. Redmond faces major hurdles in this case. The state law enforcement division confirmed the sheriff's office never asked Sledge Crime Scene Unit to assist in the investigation nor to collect evidence the night of the shooting. The sheriff's office also did not secure Caleb James's clothes, his cell phone, nor seize Escobar's cell phone the night of the shooting. The state didn't get Cassie Escobar's phone until January 14th, eight months after the killing. That, uh, and, and I say on my own, I have to be quite frank, on my own and with the assistance of his mother, uh, Ms. Peavy, Ms. Jessica Peavy, that we've been able to review as well. And with that, have come to the conclusion that based on the facts that we have in this case, that at this point, it rises to a level of uh, being indicted for murder. Such right Escobar's attorney argued what prosecutors called a confession was nothing out of the ordinary. I agree with the solicitor. We're not here to end up trying the case. I may not be the one standing before you to end up trying the case, but it needs to end up having all the facts. I submit to you the facts haven't changed. I didn't hear any facts changing even here today. Did not hear any facts that change. Some assistance from the victims, which I, my heart goes out there, prepared to. Cassie, is there anything you'd like to say? What was the last thing you said to Caleb? Cassie Escobar left court under a no contact order with the PV family. She remains free on bond, awaiting trial. Throughout this investigation, we were extremely open with the Darlington County Sheriff's Office, laying out everything we found and the questions we had. Again, no law enforcer mentioned in this report would agree to go on camera to answer our questions. I did get a response from Darlington County Sheriff's Chief Deputy Chad McInville a few weeks ago. He claimed some of what we're reporting about the Sheriff's Office is, quote, very inaccurate, but the chief deputy never responded when I asked him to tell us exactly what wasn't true so we could set the record straight. SLED tells me its agents are merely assisting the sheriff's office in this investigation and SLED is not taking this case on.